What's going on guys? Today we are back with another video. It is a big time summer cool down. Um, we got like lows in the upper 40s, low 50s, and highs in the 60s, and it feels good out. It's a good change of pace from the 100 degree um, heat and humidity every day, which many of us have been experiencing this summer. And uh, I have not been on this lake in a little while. I've actually been kind of traveling and doing a lot of trout fishing and a little bit of everything over the course of the past week. Um, but one thing I noticed that these fish just out here this, in the last kind of day or two now have definitely moved out deeper, and uh, it is the perfect time to do a very finesse. Um, presentation that you guys ask about quite a bit and that is rigging or Lindy rigging um, it's a very simple way to fish and we'll get into all the specifics on how I do it um, but yeah we're gonna pull it we're actually on the first spot now uh, we're gonna start kind of putting around with the big motor or trolling motor first here and hopefully we're gonna catch a bunch of walleyes today doing some rigging and kind of go over a lot of the specifics the rod reel setup um, hooks, weights, all that stuff, and then a lot of bow control, because that is probably the most crucial part of Lindy rigging. Lindy rigging has been around for a million years, and uh, the specifics on rigging haven't really changed a lot, um, but basically how you present this presentation is ultimately what catches more fish um, than other guys, or other presentations, depending on how, you know, how those fish are geared. Um, so it's a great presentation, pretty much works everywhere while I live in the summer, and uh, we're gonna get right into it, stay tuned. All right, we got picked up. Big sweeping hook sets. And fish on. <laughs> I always love the hook set when rigging. It's normally that big sweep with lots of anticipation. Look at that right there. It's exactly what we're after. Beautiful Northern Wisconsin walleye. Here, buddy. There we go. Rigging in the morning. Beautiful summer day. It's not a million degrees out. Catching walleyes. We'll take it. Here is kind of very common size for this lake. About a 19 incher, and he is off in the net. Look at that beautiful walleye right there to get things going. We'll take them all day long like that. Let's rig up. Get another one. Very simple. Very effective approach works everywhere we have not filmed a lot of videos on this or maybe even any videos on this but it's one of those techniques that is super easy to do and pretty much works everywhere and as you can see on the graph here i've got fish down there and throw a waypoint right there because that's right where we just got picked up let's pull through those guys We just got picked up, kind of going at a weird angle here. Whoa! <laughs> he is way under the boat somehow. It's kind of working back across this thing. I think we got a decent walleye on here. Getting some good head shakes. Now I don't know, now he's acting real like big small mouthy. We'll see though. He absolutely hit that thing and ran, which is the only thing that kind of leads me to believe this might be a bass. Oh, but it is not. It is exactly, exactly what we're looking for. But here we go. That is absolutely a quality fish right there. It's not fast and furious, but these fish have been a little more finicky and definitely kind of live bait inclined. And uh, it's not like real big pods of them, but I'm just working through this stuff real meticulously. And there we go. That is a heavy, heavy Northern Wisconsin walleye right there. There we go, look at that one. Quality Northern Wisconsin walleye right there. Fish is all of about 25, maybe a little bit bigger. That is absolutely what we're after out here. Fishing real slow, finesse crawl around there, get the job done. Let's let that one go, too awesome. See you later, big girl. Back to the depths. Awesome, let's do it again. 
All right, so let's talk about the rigging real quick. Um, I Lindy rig basically very similar, kind of no matter what I'm doing. The hook might change, the size of the weight might change, but the principle is always the same, right? And you can Lindy rig with crawlers, leeches, big minnows, red tails, you know, everything. You can really, really Lindy rig with any kind of live bait, and that's why it's such an effective way to fish, pretty much no matter where you go. But the setup pretty much stays the same. So I'm gonna pull this crawler off of here right now because he's kind of chewed up. But basically what I'm running is a number two and this is just kind of your standard octopus hook. Now what I don't want to do is run a super heavy gauge hook, right? And the reason for that is that extra weight of a heavy gauge hook is basically gonna sink everything down that you're fishing a little bit more, right? So I like these thinner wire, um, basically octopus hooks, or another one I really like is like a, a smaller mosquito hook, which is that real thin hook. And uh, it doesn't take a lot of pressure to penetrate to get a hook set. It also lets whatever you're fishing be very natural and very floaty on there. Now, for my lead length, basically I like tying in like five foot leads, right? So this is about a five footer. It's about three quarters of my rod length long. And uh, this is all basically 10 pound floral. Now, the next thing I do, is I tie in, actually this is eight pound floor, but the next thing I do is I, you got your swivel on there, and the next thing up, you got the weight on there. I'm fishing a three A sounds today. I like these bullet weights. If you're fishing a lot of heavy rock, you might want to go to kind of like that rock, like a more of a walking sinker, um, which a lot of times like the banana shaped sinkers or your longer stick sinkers or stuff like that. I'm just fishing gravel and a little bit of fringe weeds today, so this is my setup. But the important part is that I tie in, especially if I'm in clear water, I tie in more fluorocarbon above my rig. So basically what I have here is I have 12 pound fluorocarbon, which is heavier than the line that runs to my hook. And the reason that is, is because if I do snag up and I have to break that hook off, that that line breaks before this line breaks, right? And that's what I want. So then I get my weight and my swivel back and I just tie on another five foot lead with a hook on it, right? So very simple there. And the reason I like tying in fluorocarbon, especially in clear water above um, my swivel, is because you think about the way like a jig works, right? Let's say you have a five foot fluorocarbon lead tied on a jig. Well, that basically that uh, your braid starts five feet above that jig, right? Well, with the Lindy rig, this is almost always on the bottom and your presentation is always behind it. So then what you'd have is braid going straight to the bottom and then fluorocarbon coming up. I like having fluorocarbon basically in that zone where the fish are. So that's why I do that and I tie in probably about six feet of fluorocarbon above my weight, right, or above my swivel, and then I tie a double uni knot and back it with braid. So I still have all the sensitivity of braid, and the fish are clueless that, you know, this is obviously me fishing for them because I have all that fluorocarbon down there and they cannot see that braid, especially in clear water. And after fishing a lot of dirty water, don't have to use it. The one advantage of going to a full spool of fluorocarbon, um, you lose a little bit of sensitivity, but line comes off the spool much cleaner when you're trying to open up that bale and let the fish run, right? I like braid because it's super sensitive. You get a super good hook set, um, but you know you can go to fluorocarbon too. So that's kind of the rig I like to run. Your weight might change quite a bit depending on you know how fast you want to go, how deep you're fishing, stuff like that. A lot of my summer stuff I do with three eighths or half ounce somewhere right in there. And we're fishing a lot of this 20, 25 foot today. Now the rod is super important that you want to do this with, right? Basically, Lindy rigging you want a long soft rod. Something most of the time I would say medium light um, or a softer medium action rod. And the reason you want a long rod, so the rod I'm using is the Elliott Rods 7.6 medium light fast action. And the 7.6 rod is very limber at the tip, but it's followed up with a lot of backbone. I'm not sure how well you can see that tip back there, but it loads up and you're definitely gonna see when I'm fighting fish that that tip loads up a lot. Now it's nice to have a rod that loads up on the tip, something medium light like this, so that you can kind of feel that the weight of that fish on there before he senses you're there, right? So a lot of times you're dragging and that weight loads up the tip of that rod a little bit and then a lot of times when a fish hits, you know, it's kind of dunk, 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 that rod loads up and uh, you don't, that fish does not detect you're there yet, right? And a lot of times that's where you open up the bale and let the fish run. The other reason you want a long rod like this is for the hook set, right? So most of the time when you get a bite, basically what happens, you let that fish run a bunch of line, right? And you know, you kind of count to four or five, whatever, you know, make sure he's got it. Next thing you end up doing is you end up reeling in until you get a little bit of weight, right? Now the way a Lindy rig works is when that fish is running, the weight is essentially stationary and the fish is pulling line out through that. And basically when you go to set the hook, you'll reel in until you get a little bit of weight and then it's a very big 
long swing. It doesn't have to be like a crazy, ridiculous musky hook set, but you want that very long swing because you're not sure where that fish is at, right? He might be over this way, he might be over this way, he might be over this way. So you wanna pick up a lot of line at the same time and having a rod that's like seven six, you know, seven plus feet long for sure, definitely helps you out with doing that. All right, just got picked up. swimming with me a little bit but we got him so that long rod really comes into play and importantly a long rod which you can load up you see how I did so much reeling while that rod was already loaded up you need that play in there to catch up to him and here's a nice walleye again very very simple way to fish yet incredibly effective Here's a nice about, I don't know, 17 incher. There we go. We're catching him. He's a stocky little guy. They are very well built fish in this lake. That's not too bad. It's about 7.30, 7.45 right now in the morning. You got that crawler right in the roof of the mouth. Exactly how it's designed to hook up. You got rusted pliers. Time for more pliers. Here, buddy pop you off there we go beautiful walleyes lindy rigging super effective this is definitely one of those time periods you know this middle of summer deal where you can be trying a few different things i mean getting one fish two fish you know kind of struggling and finding that one thing that really works well and uh is kind of the deal a lot of times in these finicky summer bites and there we go we're catching them Let's let that guy go beautiful northern wisconsin walleye see you later buddy all right, so Lindy rigging is really pretty simple overall. And um, we're rigging crawlers today. And basically what I like to do, so when I thread these crawlers on, I like to thread them on so that the knot of the hook is actually covered up by uh, the crawler. So just like that there. And what I'm doing is I'm dropping this, obviously all the way down to bottom. And I like to do this while I'm moving, right? So I'm actually controlling my drifts with either the big motor or the trolling motor. And basically I'm letting line out until I'm on bottom, right? We're in about 24 feet of water. So there's my bottom, right? Now I'm always, almost always fishing this with an open bale and just holding the line, right? In case that fish really grabs and runs right away. And basically all I'm doing is I like, especially with crawlers, I like to be going about 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, somewhere right in there. Sometimes with leeches, I'll slow down and go a little bit slower. And then the biggest thing of all is controlling basically the angle of your line and where that bait's at, right? I like to think of Lindy rigging almost more as trolling than I do just like drift fishing. Um, at least controlled um, trolling or controlled drift fishing is what I'll call it, right? I like to control that speed. And basically the important part is not that I'm dragging bottom constantly. I hate when I'm just constantly plowing bottom. These baits fish a lot cleaner and they look a lot more natural when that sinker's just occasionally ticking the bottom, right? I don't wanna be constantly in the bottom might be getting picked up right now oh just a rock but i like to be just kind of barely ticking bottom constantly right so a lot of times throughout your, your your pass or whatever you might be playing with that line length you might be letting a little bit more out you might kind of be pulling up on that line to get a little bit more forward but fishing a very sensitive rod um, definitely goes a long ways in doing this because it lets you know when you're ticking bottom lets you know when you're dragging bottom lets you know when you're not feeling bottom at all right and like i said we're fishing with our kind of our index finger right on the line like that so when we get a bite oftentimes what i'll do is i just you know free spool go into free spool give that fish five six seconds to make sure he's got that whole crawler with a leech you don't have to wait quite as long um, but a lot of times with the crawler you want to give him that extra second to eat it so that's kind of basically the deal there you know if you're fishing a heavier weight i'm running a three a sounds today uh, but if you're fishing a heavier weight obviously your, your line would be much more diagonal down it'd be a much sharper angle down to the bottom you know, if you're fishing a quarter, it'd be a very long line in these depths. And if you're fishing a three eighths, it'd be, you know, like, kind of like my angle, kind of about a 45 going down. So the weight 
um, you use and the speed you go dictates a lot of that line angle and how much line you're gonna let out. But basically when I'm doing this, one thing stays the same. I, hate, I don't like to be plowing bottom. You know, this is not like a slack line technique and I don't wanna be never touching bottom, right? If I take that rod and drop it back like this far and hits bottom, that's about perfect for me, right? And if I'm taking bottom occasionally, cause that lets me know I'm, you know, with definitely within a foot of that bottom and everything looks very natural. That worm's very floaty, kind of moving through at half a mile an hour. And uh, that sinker's not collecting a whole bunch of junk or getting snagged in rocks. Just got picked up and we got a runner. Whoa, that was weird. <laughs> I set the hook with a closed bale <laughs> or an open bale. That is not what you want to do. But it feels like we got a decent fish here. <laughs> Man, that was bizarre. Set the hook and I thought my line broke. And this is what we're after. A lot of times in the summer, these fish group up on a lot of these same flats. And that one took off. When they are biting today, they're just screaming line out, which is always fun. None of that soft, and it's, you, you do kind of notice it's a lot of times lake to lake. Some lakes they'll pick it up and just scream line on you. Other lakes, it's just that soft weight, and you can just feel them kind of sitting there, chomp, chomp. There we go. There's your nice, about 18 inch walleye. I'll give you guys a look. There we go. Beautiful, about 18 inch walleye. Exactly what we're after out here. Dragging real slow, working through these big flats, catching walleyes. Just let them go. Awesome. See you later, buddy. All right, now where do you rig or do this Lindy rigging technique? Well, really you can do it anywhere walleyes live, but most of the time where I find myself doing this, what I'm looking for is a lot of these larger deep water summer flats, right? Um, today I'm fishing a big flat that's like uh, 26, 24 feet deep, right? And these fish are, there's not really a sweet spot out here. These fish are kind of scattered kind of throughout this whole flat. And, you know, if you're like a Mille Lacs guy, um, the big mud flats are kind of a similar thing, you know, big sand flats, um, you know, on a lot of big natural lakes are a, a great spot to do this. But these large areas that don't have a sweet spot where you have to cover some water to catch fish, which is exactly what we're going through today. We're covering this flat and we're dragging it out, right? And, you know, the spot where you wouldn't want to do this would be like a very small rock bar, right? Or a very small little weed edge, right? These areas are almost too small a lot of times to make it even worth it to like drag something for this amount of time, right? It's very difficult to, to, it's almost pointless to do this if you're on a spot where you go, you know, 10 yards this way, turn around and come 10 yards back the other way. So a lot of these big flats are kind of the perfect spot to do this on. And most of the time what I'm seeing, I might see a few fish on sonar, you know, a pot that looks something like this right here. But a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm dictating how I'm working through the spot based on side imaging, right? So I'm looking for pods of fish on side imaging something that looks something like this right here. And when I see that, I just kind of swing my boat over to those fish, right? Or I'll just kind of, you know, kind of do a, a 90 degree turn where I see them, and I just kind of go straight that way. And a lot of times what you can do is you can kind of plot your course through a spot. You know, every time you see a good pot of fish, drop a waypoint on it. And then, you know, after maybe an hour of work in that spot, you catch a few fish. And on top of that, you know, you kind of got all those different waypoints in which you can work through, you know, down a half a mile stretch or a couple hundred yard area, right? So that's kind of what I like to do. And we actually got a pretty good pot of fish under us right now. So we will see if they bite. Yep, <laughs> look at that, right on cue. No more than set it and got picked up. He has taken some line. Here's that big sweeping hook set. There we go. Just like that. Fish on. <laughs> How cool is that? And it feels like a good one. There's a lot of weight on the end of this. Such a productive way to fish. Oh yeah, squirrely, squirrely walleye. 
too perfect. I was not planning that whatsoever. But here we go. I'll let him in the back so the big camera can kind of pick it up. Come here, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Nice chunker walleye on the linear, right on cue. And the spot I'm working, I'm actually still seeing more fish. It's a couple hundred yards probably in every direction. And I've kind of got these fish mapped out kind of where they are for the most part. And Lindy rigging is definitely one of those techniques where you might hook a fish deep. And basically what I do is I come in through the gill with a little bit of pressure on the line, take the hook, turn it backwards like that, pull the pliers out, hook comes right out. There we go. Beautiful walleye right there on the Lindy rig. He is going to be just fine going back. You will see. There we go. Super effective way to fish.